is pretty accurate. We have the third person coming in, fourth person, and we have people counting four, fifth, sixth, very accurate. Hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio, I'm a computer vision developer and consultant, and I help companies, freelancers, and students to easily and efficiently build computer vision projects. Today we will see how to count people from a CCTV camera with a very high accuracy. We will see at the beginning what you are probably doing and if you are doing that, you are doing it wrong. And later we will see a two-step process to do this the right way so that you can count the people with the highest accuracy possible. So let's go. Uh, let's take this CCTV camera from a bakery. What probably you are doing if you are trying to track and count people from these kind of scenarios is taking a pre-trained deep learning model, whether it's any version of YOLO or any other model, apply that model for the detection plus some tracking and try to count them. And there are two problems that come with this. First one, the detection is not going to work very well and you will you will get a lot of false positive and i will show you that how it works and second people most likely are going to be overlapping where there are multiple people on this scenario and you are going to have a hard time tracking them and so the count is going to be completely wrong let's see what is going to happen and then how to solve that uh, i'm going now to run one of the new scaled yolo versions to see what we get so i have here the code for this and i'm going to run this and let's take a few seconds that this will run and this is the result so of course the preacher model can attack 80 different categories i just put a condition to only find the people and the detection is quite decent because we can detect that now there are one, two, three, four people and we can attack very well this one that it's in front. We get them, uh, we get it almost all the time. We don't get the person working because it's behind, it's small and it's not well visible, but we generally get a correct detection of the customer, at least to some extent, because this is one of the problems. Here, this one is detected quite correctly most of the time. This one, when the person is small on the side, we have our time to detect them. So if I go further and I see other examples with this, for example, now when there is this person right here with black clothes, it's very hard to be detected. And this is only the first problem. Even if now the accuracy seems decent, when you go to make the tracking, you will find a lot of struggles if you don't have better precision. This is only the first problem, not very good accuracy. Okay, now we see what is our struggle. Detected, not detected. This person on the left side. What is now the second problem is with the tracking. So now, for, to this model, I'm going to add the deep sort object tracking. So let me activate the deep sort object tracking. Uh, so now I've just enabled the deep sort tracking. And uh, let me also hide the boxes of detection we, because we don't need them anymore. And we'll see now the second struggle that probably you are having if you are approaching the problem this way. Now we have person one and person three. I will probably speed up this a bit on the video because there is a specific phase where we get the problem. And it's when there is occlusion. So when one person is hiding the other, that's where we get the problem. Now let's focus mostly on the IDs. Here we see person one and person three. This is not a specific account, this is just an ID. So it doesn't matter what's the number. The important thing is that this one must be always associated with this person right here, while these three must be always associated, associated with this. If there is an exchange of the IDs, so if person one becomes three and so on, or if they lose the count, then there is some big problem because it means that we have no clue of what is happening over time. And that's one of the problems. So there was occlusion, even if we have deep sort, which is a good object tracking algorithm, 
were not able to follow correctly the person. So there was an exchange of the IDs and we cannot count correctly the people if we proceed this way. So how to solve this problem? Let's see the two step process that I adopted and you will see how well this will work in comparison with this method. So let's do that. Uh, now, what are the two steps that we can take? Well, this is very simple. Instead of taking the entire box of the person, we can take only the head because the head is a very small portion. The head is always visible, at least from a top camera. So when there is occlusion, if some part of the body is occluded, you have a hard time to detect the person. But when you have a top camera, the head, at least some part of the head is always visible. So human head, it means that we take just this. So this will be the box on one person, this on the other one, and this on the third person. So when on this side right here, the people are crossing, most of the time we see both of the heads and that's what we want to achieve and that's completely fine but also went more in depth than this. So because there are many ways to get the head. One way will be, of course, taking the head. So taking a long video footage of this bakery of or the place where you have the cameras and make the annotation on that specific video footage. Or we can also try with taking public data set of a lot of human heads and see how that works. So I've tried all of these and I'm going to make a comparison and later we're going to see what are the results. So what I did first, I went and I looked for a public heads data set and I found the open images Google data set. So also this will be on the course if you are interested about this I have some lesson where is explained how to easily download thousands of images from the open images data set. In this specific case, I look for, there are around 600 categories. So there is a lot of choice that you can take this data set are for free. And I look for human head. So you can take be a lot of parts of the human arm, body, ear, eye, foot, face, and so on. I look for human head and you can see uh, right here if I scroll some example. So ideally we take a data set, the deep learning model with the training will understand what is a head because we gave so many samples that later it can, can find the head on images or videos that it has never seen before. On this specific data set, there were 26,000 images of heads, which were a good sample to work with. So what I did, I downloaded these images. Let me show now uh, some of the steps that I went through. Uh, so this is the exact same data set which I downloaded on my computer. And I have exactly right here, 26,000 images of just heads everywhere. There are heads. Uh, and I have also labels for each image. So to each image, there is a file, a text file associated, which is telling exactly the position of the head. So we have, for example, the picture number one, which has this name, we have human head, and then we have the details telling uh, where is the head and how big is the head so that later we can give this for the training. With these details right here, then I was able to proceed to make the training and I left this training for around 50 hours. So I took 26,000 images. I put this with my computer for around 50 hours. And I have this graph which gets the results of the training. Let me make this a bit bigger. So this is the model improving. So it's getting the average loss always lower. It means lower loss, it means better precision. So this is the graph going down, less loss, it means better precision. And here we have the accuracy of our detection. So already from the beginning was 94% and we get to we got to around 97%, which from the graph seems 
an incredible result, but you need to consider that this 97% of accuracy is on general human heads, which usually on this data set, they are very big, very easy to identify. I will just open a random one. So very easy to identify, very big. While when we work with our video and our specific scenario, so let's let's compare the heads. This is what the heads are on this CCTV camera. And these are what our data set heads look like. So there are of course some similar pattern, but you will see that there is quite a big difference from the data set and the human head that we have on this CCTV camera. So already, even before trying, I can expect some interesting results, but not the best accuracy. So I did the training for this. Let's see what accuracy I got after 50 hours of training on this one. So from this one, from the different models that I have, let's run this custom detector, which is the one trained on these 26,000 heads from Google. And let's, let's now run and see how this works. Uh, we have some detection. So we, I didn't really expect anything uh, special from that data set, at least for how different they were. But already we are detecting at least this person right here. We have very hard time detecting the smaller the smaller people on the side also the uh, so customer clients like the the person working so it's it's working quite bad i would say it work it's working very bad so what is the second and best approach that we can do about the human head detection will be to work exactly with the video footage that we have so that all the training will be specific for that scenario. So the more similar it is to what we will have in reality, the best would be, the better would be the accuracy. So let's see how I went the second way to train this one. So as training the human head on the Google data set in this case wasn't the best option, I decided to switch on a dedicated data set. So I decided to take, record a video footage of the bakery, extract the videos, extract the images from the video and make the annotation on these specific images. So what you see right here are the images, they look all the same, but they are different because the scenario is the same, but the people are different in a different position at least. So these are all images. On these images, I made the annotation. So on each single image, the annotation means putting a box surrounding the person and saving a text file. Of course, I used, I did this using a software and I'm not going into details uh, about this. Everything is explained on more advanced course that you can find on pysource.com. Now, uh, let's see how went the training for this specific scenario. So I took uh, 2,000 images for for around 3,000 to 3,500 heads. And I did the training. Let me show you also the graph of this specific training. Uh, this is the result of the training. So it was much faster, of course, only 2,000 images. And already after a few hours, I got for that specific scenario, more than 97%, which we got almost close to 100% for the scenario that we had. Let's see now how this works with our bakery. So now let's switch the model. So I have now three models. The first one was the pre-trained model, YOLO model, which was detecting the person. The second one that we tried was the one from the Google Open Images data set on general human heads. And now we have like just the heads from the bakery. And let's see now how this works. Now already from the beginning, even if probably it's not the best because we can work this and improve this with more, uh, with more images, but already here we have some very good detection. So this person right here is always stable, very well detected. Also the person on the side, despite it's small and not so well visible, 
is detected. Also, the person working at the bakery is detected, which was very hard to do before. And now we have the best detection ever. And we are able to follow the movement of that person. Also, if not always, because we didn't have a very big data set to start with. But the most important is that we have the correct detection on this area where clients are coming. So now you should be familiar about the first step. The first step is making a specific training for your own images and your own videos. Because if you use a pre-trained model, you're going to get just very average results. What is the second step? Well, let me show you the second step. The second step is making, selecting a specific region of interest on the scenario you want to perform the counting in order to avoid false positive. What does this mean? It means that if you take into account the entire scenario, let's say this uh, person right here, which we almost don't see, if this person is sometimes visible, sometimes it's not visible, we are counting this person multiple times. By selecting a region, we take the region where the people need to be in order to be counted. And this can be, for example, something like this. So we count the person only if it crosses this specific area. Because normally it depends, so you should choose that one specifically for your type of uh, business activity. In this case, there, here is the, they, they need to cross this line for sure when they need to pay. So we make sure that we count only people that are crossing that line. By the way, now I have this, you see already the counting because I've already implemented this. Now I'm, I'm breaking this down for you so that you will see uh, how this is uh, going to work specifically. So this is the area that we take into consideration. If the person is outside of this area, it's not of our interest. So the smaller the area we focus on, the smaller the region of interest, the higher the chance that we have the precision of the counting. Uh, let me now just draw a line and let's see how accurate this is going to be. Oh, this is what I did. So I drew a line which separates the two areas, one that we don't care about and on the right side, our region of interest. Also, there is a line when we are tracking the person on our region of interest, this line is blue. When there is no one on this side, this line is green. So green, it means it's empty. Blue, it means there is someone. And for example, this person right, right here is not counted yet. It's going to be counted only when the person crosses this line. So let's wait a few seconds. And I'm going to show quickly an entire video footage where I have 30 minutes compressed of this video so we can see also the result. And don't leave till the end of the video because later I'm going to give you some tips on how you can improve this on your own projects and what struggles you might face with this. So it might take a while before this person is crossing. So let's just go and check the video footage that I recorded with all the tracking made. So I have everything right here, which is exactly the same so that we can see this very accelerated. So we start with the counting, which is zero. We see people zero and let's go. We have people one. Now this person is, end, is still here, so we have one. The person crossed the area and we have two. You see, this person crosses, we have two. It doesn't matter if the person is bouncing between the two areas because we have the ID, we don't make any multiple counting. The worst possible scenario will be that this person that we have right here, this one, will go here where we don't have any coverage of the camera. So if we lose the track and the person comes back, of course, we have multiple counting. That's very unlikely to happen, but it still may happen. So it's good to take that into account. For the rest, I can guarantee that it is pretty accurate. We have the third person coming in, fourth person and we have people counting four, fifth, sixth, very accurate, seventh, even if they stay long time, still we have the tracking, still everything is accurate. We don't have multiple counting. 
and later I'm going to show you also the the worst scenario. Okay, this is one of the harder scenarios where there are two people with different height. For example, there is a small child with the woman. If the child is hidden by the woman, then after a few seconds we and it reappears, we might have double counting, and it's probably what happens here. So nine is the correct count, and for a moment, so the child and the woman were counted three times instead of two. So that's one of the challenges and the problem that we might have. For the rest, it's working pretty well. So I can, let's see. Let's see some other here. Okay, we have 15, 16. See also this man is bouncing from one side to the other, but seal is not counted twice it's counted only once to guarantee how well it's working oh and this by the way was just a test that I'm, i realized in a couple of days so if you want to get the best result i don't want to oversimplify this project it takes a lot of things there are a lot of things to take into account uh, for example the quality of the camera how many frames you have per second the position of the camera the hardware that you have to process in real time the video footage, like the, the frames from the camera, and also things that can make these with a higher accuracy, for example, having a custom model to detect the people, having the right tracking model, and also having some more advanced device like a LiDAR or a depth camera, which can guarantee you a be better result for the detection and tracking. So there are a lot of things for this quite complex project because people counting is one is very advanced in comparison like with car counting or other simple objects where there is no occlusion where like for example in a conveyor belt or the traffic the car there is some distance between the car it's they are very big uh, very easy to to detect and so on so this is all for this video. Let me know in the comment what you think about this and what would you like to see next. This is all for now. See you in the next one.